All right, good afternoon, Los Angeles, and welcome to your port of Los Angeles, the greatest port in the world, the strongest producing port in the Western Hemisphere, and I am so proud to be here with the men and women who make this work every single day. First, let me start by thanking our uh, harbor commissioners. These are citizen volunteers who spend a full-time job on top of their daily work, serving our community, serving this port, serving our economy. President Jamie Lee, Vice President Ed Renwick, Diane Middleton, Lucia Moreno Linares, and Anthony Perosi. Let's give them a round of applause and thank them for the amazing work that they do. They oversee the governance of a port led by the best executive director of a port anywhere in the world, a dear friend and somebody who I've enjoyed working for almost a decade now together with. He has made Los Angeles each year uh, surpass the high bar that we set and that's Gene Soroka and his incredible team. Thank you, Gene, for all you've done. We also have our great labor leaders from ILWU who we're going to be hearing from in a minute, so I won't introduce everybody, but let's hear it for the men and women who every single day make this work because it doesn't happen automatically. And our business leaders who invest the capital and own the companies and move the, the cargo that comes in here. I want to thank our business community as well. We're going to be hearing them too. I also want to thank uh, uh, Chief Terrasas, who's joined us, and Chief Michael Moore and Chief Gazy. We have an incredible law enforcement and public safety team. Um, one of those three is actually from San Pedro, and uh, Wilmington, and lives in San Pedro. Let's get that right. Um, we have two Michael Moores here today, actually, uh, but he's only one of them. But uh, great uh, chief as well as well. And you might be asking, why is this dream team here today assembled in front of this giant American flag surrounded by the awe-inspiring port? Well, we are here to celebrate. And God knows we need a lot more celebration after this past year. In the darkest moments of this past year, some of the brightest spots we saw were those who were keeping us alive, keeping us connected, keeping our economy going while we didn't know what tomorrow would bring. And in fact, more things were moving through this port than we have ever moved before. And so today, we are marking a milestone, and we're gonna watch a very special cargo container, or TEU, as we know them, as it gets loaded onto a ship. And it's special because this is the 10th million TEU in the last 12 months, a brand new record. Let's hear it for LA and the port. You heard that right. We were the first port anywhere in the Western Hemisphere to ever do this. And we often refer to the Port of LA as America's port, because I can talk to anybody in any corner of our nation and let them know how dependent they are and how important um, this port is to their commerce, to their jobs, to their daily life. This is not only the busiest and largest, but this twin port complex together with our sister port of Long Beach. 31% of the goods brought into this country one out of every 48 jobs in America, one out of every nine jobs in the region comes through this port. And this last year, in spite of this devastating pandemic, we continue to break cargo records here. It happened because of the leadership of the folks you'll hear from in a minute, and we're celebrating this work because of the essential workers who showed up every single day in the face of uh, the risk of COVID, just as we saw workers in our grocery stores, in our food processing plants, in our hospitals, the men and women of our longshore unions, the truck drivers who took the goods, the warehouse workers, helped America work at the toughest moments. And our dedicated longshore workers ensured that PPE would get to our hospitals, that goods were delivered to our stores. That tireless work literally saved lives. You can't count those that are still here with us, but we know that many tens of thousands of people are alive today because of the collective response that we had to this pandemic. In fact, California right now has the lowest case rate in America, on, third only to Vermont and South Dakota, which I think aren't as densely populated as here. So it shows that what we've done, we did right. These folks were kept very busy, whether it was an import surge that started last summer. I, I know you all remember the consumer buying surge, which required us to ramp up the restocking of grocery store shelves and e-commerce warehouses across the country. As people were staying at home, they had new needs that had to be met. But let me put it this way, the average number of container ships that were worked on here daily increased by 
50% during the pandemic, from 10 to 15 every single day. Today, we're loading the 10 million container onto one of those ships. And by the end of the fiscal year, we expect the port will have processed more than 10.8 million TEUs, another record on top of this record for the Western Hemisphere. So thank you again to all the supply chain stakeholders for the dedicated work that you brought to this during this unprecedented time. And so with that, let me turn it over to our first speaker. As I mentioned, she, together with five other everyday Angelinos, leads our Harbor Commission and does extraordinary work balancing the needs of commerce, of our environment, of labor, and of looking at our future as well. We couldn't be more proud of her. Please welcome the president of your Harbor Commission, Jamie Lee. Thank you so much, Mayor Garcetti, and for all of you for joining us today. As president of the Los Angeles Harbor Commission, I am so incredibly proud to be part of this celebration that we've convened to show our appreciation and our gratitude to everyone who has made this milestone possible today, especially in the midst of this devastating pandemic. 10 million containers is an incredible amount of cargo. To put it in perspective, stacked end-to-end -end 10 million TEUs would wrap around the globe one and a half times, which is quite poetic actually, because these containers actually do circle the globe. In this 12-month cargo volume record is literally the first for any port in the Western Hemisphere ever. And to process this much cargo in a year like we've all just experienced has been an enormous task. And so I am so grateful to be the one to bear so many thanks today. First, the women and men of our local ILWU workforce, you are extraordinary. As the mayor mentioned, the average number of ships worked in port each day has gone up 50% in this past year. Our work shifts are up 20% over our four-year average. And you rose to the challenge to get these boxes unloaded, loaded, and onto their destinations quickly and efficiently. And to all of our par partners here at the port, from CMA CGM, our largest ocean carrier who is here with us to celebrate today, it was actually coincidentally there at their headquarters in Marseille more than two years ago when I was with Jean Soroka, Mike DiBernardo, and Eric Karras, and they brought me into the fold of the Port of Los Angeles' aspirational dream to one day hit 10 million TEUs, and here we stand today. To our local trucking community and our terminal operators, to every node along the supply chain, we could not do this without you. I want to give my personal thanks to Jean Soroka and the entire port staff Thank you for leading us in a time of incredible challenge, innovating constantly, keeping the boxes moving, rising to go above and beyond, despite the daily uncertainties that we faced in the pandemic. And on top of all of that, not only innovating and pivoting, but to take on additional opportunities and responsibilities through Love LA to provide emergency PPE, sourcing and distributing them for the city of Los Angeles, to provide vaccination centers for the workers who are here on the docks every single day. You are truly an exceptional and world-class team. I've been incredibly honored to lead the Harbor Commission during this historic time. I wanna thank all of my fellow commissioners for their unending passion, their integrity, the wisdom, and the enthusiasm which they approach their work every single day. Thank you so much. Given what we've collectively been through over these past 15 months, it makes this 10 million TEU celebration all the more sweeter. We've overcome incredible obstacles to get to where we are today, but we've succeeded, and that just makes me all the more optimistic for what lies ahead for all of us. My gratitude is unending and eternal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie, so much, and thanks for being such a, a great leader globally uh, for all of us who consider Los Angeles home. Uh, next up, I'm going to turn over to Ed Aldrich, who is the president of CMA CGM America. And I loved your story, Jamie. I loved being able to see when we welcomed the Benjamin Franklin here, which at the time was the largest uh, ship, I think, in North America that had ever come in as a cargo ship. Uh, the constant investments you have made, the partner you have been, you have done extraordinary work, and at the beginning of this pandemic, you donated 200,000 badly needed masks to us uh, that helped save lives as well. So thank you, Ed, and we'd love to hear from you. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Thank you, Mayor Garcetti and Commissioner Lee for your support of the CMA CGM Group. The City of Los Angeles and the Port of LA are great partners, and we are very honored to deliver the Port of LA's 10 millionth TEU. Gene, to my friend Gene Soroka, on behalf of CMA CGM, I want to personally thank you for your leadership and your ongoing support you have provided for, for our 10 services calling this port, especially during this very, very challenging year. I also want to expend, extend a very special thank you to the team at Phoenix Marine Services, the ILWU, and the OCU for taking consistent care of our customers every single day. Today, the CMA Group is a shipping powerhouse serving 19 U.S. ports with 36 services and 96 weekly port calls. We have a ship entering or exiting a U.S. port every two hours. And the Port of L.A., the Port of L.A. is the largest and most important port for the CMA Group here in the United States. Our relationship with the port actually began 83 years ago when our subsidiary APL made their first call in LA on December 7, 1938. Today, this is where we deploy our largest vessels and provide our key expedited and valuated services. Also, more than 30% of the group's U.S. cargo volume flows through this critical port. The CMA CGM Group was the Port of LA's number one customer in terms of volume in 2020, and we are still your number one customer year to date. <clears throat> the number of TEUs is important, but at CMA we think of every TEU as a valuable customer, and our customers are our number one priority. The container you see next to me today is filled with soybeans destined for Asia. It is from the DeLong Company, CMA's top U.S. export customer. The DeLong Company is the number one exporter of containerized agricultural products in the entire United States. And Mr. Bo DeLong, their vice president, is here to celebrate with all of us today. <clears throat> For over 15 years, the DeLong For over 15 years, the DeLong Company has been exporting soybeans to more than 20 countries around the world, primarily to Southeast Asia, China, and Taiwan. <clears throat> Mr. DeLong, CMA, CMA CGM truly appreciates you being here today, and I want you to know that we will always be there for you with new ideas and innovative services. We remain committed absolutely committed to ensuring our farmers and exporters get their products to overseas markets on time and intact. At CMA CGM, our overall objective is to be recognized and respected by all of our stakeholders as the market leader in shipping and logistics. CMA is committed to delivering the essentials that will keep America moving. Thank you and congratulations again to the Port of Los Angeles we deeply value our partnership and appreciate you always working with us to better serve our clients. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abe. Thanks for your friendship, your great words, and your great business. Uh, we do very much appreciate that, and we appreciate how you stepped up with us as a partner during this tough, tough year. Uh, next, as I promised, there's two Michael Moores here, but one you might be less familiar with in Los Angeles, at least if uh, you watch the evening news. You're used to that guy in the back with the stars on his collar. Uh, but Michael Moore is also, A. Michael Moore is also uh, the chair of Phoenix Marine Services Board, a uh, critical partner in what we're doing here today. And I want to thank you, Michael, on behalf of your entire company and all the great work you do. Michael? Well, hello, Los Angeles. Uh, I'd like to express the same thanks that you've heard before to the Mayor's Office, to the Harbor Commission, to CMA, to the Port of LA, and to the ILWU for making this, the, some days, the busiest container terminal in North America. I'd also like to just tell you a little private story about two gentlemen here. Mr. Aldridge and I have known each other for a very long time. Uh, we were in Hong Kong working side by side in the late 90s. Sorry about putting the date out there, Ed. <laughs> 
we actually were on the Sealand ship vessel uh, at the same time, watching the handover from the British to the Chinese uh, in 1999. In the mid-2000s, Mr. Soroka and I worked side by side in Dubai. We were both based in Dubai. He was working for APL and I was working for another company. Uh, but this is very personal. These two gentlemen have helped Phoenix Marine uh, transition itself from a container terminal three years ago when we acquired it had had about a decade of underinvestment. In the first 18 months, uh, we put $140 million into assets, equipment, people, processes in the organization. The, the cranes, we ordered the cranes, in fact, before we acquired the company. We were so confident in the future, the Port of LA, that we, we, we went to China and put a bid on four cranes before we even owned Phoenix Marine. Over the past three years, uh, we've done our part to reduce greenhouse gas. Uh, we've reduced it by double digits uh, in three years. Working with the Port of LA, we've gotten a grant from the DOT to, to double our inter on dock intermodal rail facility, which takes trucks off the highway, takes emissions out of the air. Behind me, you see a, a, a container tractor that's fueled by hydrogen fuel cells. So Phoenix Marine is absolutely committed to doing our part to reduce carbon in the air. I'd like to close by thanking everybody for attending. It's a very proud moment for us. It's a very proud moment for our partners. Uh, and I'd like you to enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. And now I'd like to bring up the leaders of ILW, who we've all uh, praised. Um, they represent extraordinary men and women who wake up at all sorts of hours to come and to take a shift uh, moving the precious cargo in and out of this country. It's the reason that we remain the number one container port year after year. So please welcome, join me in welcoming to the podium ILWU Local 13 President Ramon Ponce de Leon, ILWU Local 63 President Mike uh, Podu, and also is, is John here yet? No, he didn't arrive. John? Danny okay. Ray. No, and I know Danny, don't worry. I, ILW Local 94 and my brother, uh, all three of these leaders have done an extraordinary job. Danny Miranda, I want to thank him as well. Um, every single day, you have shown me what friendship is about, you have demonstrated what hard work is all about, and you embody to me the greatest part of the American spirit. Gentlemen? You going first? Thank you. Yeah. You thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Ramon Ponce de Leon, uh, President of ILW Local 13, along with uh, Mike Badu, Marine Clerks President, Local 63, and Danny Miranda, Local 94, the foreman. I represent the Longshore. Mayor, thank you very much for all your support through the years and your continued support for the future. Gene Soroka, you're the man. Thank you very much, Gene. And to the, uh, just want to say something to the reporters. Shortage of labor. I'll bet 10 million TEUs against the shortage of labor. <laughs> the ILW is a proud workforce. And our members, the ILW members of Local 136394, are Class B, and our casual workforce work day and night through a pandemic to push this through. And we're committed to continue doing that. And just so you know, if you're on the East Coast, LA is the place. West Coast, best coast. Thank you, Mayor. Here's the place. The membership dial W works in collaboration and, and collectively with the PMA, with the member companies, Phoenix Marine. We're standing today at Phoenix Marine, a terminal that is not automated. They use our labor to move this cargo, and it's just a great thing to celebrate it here, to let everybody know that we're the workforce, we're pushing that cargo. We're Americans pushing goods for America. Thank you. Well, first of all, I want to say, first and foremost, thank you to all the ILW locals, the men and women that work down here on the docks. I have the ILW locals 13, 63, and 94. But I think everyone needs to understand this is not something that we do alone. This is a team effort. And how did we get here through a pandemic? a major pandemic that kept a lot of men and women across this United States not working. It was with the efforts of our mayor, Garcetti, we have Gene Soroka, his staff at the Port of LA, uh, Chief Gazi at the Port of LA, the LAFD, 
the LAPD, the uh, Coast Guard, the Customs uh, uh, Group, everybody coming to work day and night through this past year to make everything work. But it wouldn't have been possible without, first of all, these our members being known as and being actually deemed essential workers. And I also want to thank Governor Newsom for what he's done. You know, this is a milestone here, 10 million. You know, we look forward to putting 15 million containers through this port next year. That's a goal, that'd be great. But with Triumph, I heard some snickers. <laughs> but, but with Triumph, there is tragedy. And I just wanna recognize those, uh, those brothers that have passed through the pandemic. We'd lost 14 members of uh, locals 13, 16, and three and 94 through this pandemic. But day and night, we came to work and day and night, we will continue coming to work. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Well, one of the difficulties is following my brothers after they've said most of what I, we need to be said, but it, it's an incredible feat for our membership, for the city, for the port. Once again, Mayor Garcetti, Gene Sorokin and his staff, the collaboration with our employers, we can't say it again, the port pilots that bring these ships in and out of this harbor. It's a great day. It's incredible. I'm so proud to be part of it. And I'd like to thank all the members, everybody that's here tonight, today. Thanks again. Uh, what can I say? 10 million? We're looking for 15 million. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I accept the challenge. So I heard 11 million there. That's a good challenge. You know, we should, we should get there. Um, I also want to thank Rebecca Orr, who is the captain of the port for the U.S. Post, uh, Coast Guard. Um, and all the men and women of our Coast Guard. Also, I'm gonna be with Secretary of Homeland Security in just a couple hours who's visiting LA, who's an, an Angelino. But I wanna thank our US Custom and Border Protection uh, agents and uh, Carlos Martel, who's the director as well. Let's give them a round of applause and thank our federal partners for all that they do. Appreciate you deeply. Last but not least, we saved uh, the very best for last. It's Gene Soroka, who we've all been praising. I'm sure he's been uh, melting in his suit listening to the praise. It's not something he enjoys, uh, but it's something that he merits. Uh, because uh, before we knew each other and we were looking for the next executive director of this port, two or three people said, this is the best guy. And um, you hear that, it's tough to meet that expectation quite often, but Gene, you have not only met that, you continue to leap over that. Uh, you know how to balance things, you know how to interact with people, you're a relational human being as well as a great leader, as well as your team, and during this pandemic, we gave him an additional job as this city's chief logistics officer, a position we had never had before. But each one of us, mayors, governors, everyday folks, remember those emails we're getting? I know a guy who has a, a, a lead on masks coming out of Singapore from China. Uh, we need a deposit, let's figure it out. A thousand emails, scams, people who were well-intentioned but didn't know how to get it done. Um, and I knew there's one person who could sort through that, and not only sort through that, but get us what we needed. And this is the man who helped us get those N95s at 73 cents uh, mask made here in America that we gave to our hospitals so that they never had a shortage again, uh, who helped us in so many different ways. And so I'm so indebted and you absolutely should be reveling in this moment and celebrating the 10 millionth TEU. Ladies and gentlemen, your Port Executive Director, Gene Sirocco. Thank you, Mayor, and what a great day for Los Angeles. For our dock workers, longshore, and every port worker, the more than 100,000 men and women that come here to the docks every day to do their business. And to great friends like CMA, CGM, Phoenix Marine Services, and all the other partners throughout this great port complex that made this day happen. And it's with special thanks to the men and women behind me. Los Angeles Police Chief Michael Moore, Los Angeles Fire Chief Ralph Tarasis, United States Coast Guard Captain of the Port Rebecca Orr, and our own Port Police Chief, Head of Public Safety and Emergency Management Tom Gazy, and to the 200 sworn and civilian officers of the Los Angeles Police Department, it's a debt of gratitude that I'll never be able to repay. Thank you all very much for all your support. And to Carlos Martel, Director of Field Operations for the United States Customs and Border Protection, the men and women are out here every day and every night moving America's cargo to our customers. 
today, this box container we see here is significant. And it's an appropriate to sh time to shine the spotlight on it. These are soybeans from the DeLong Company, started in 1913, headquartered in Clinton, Wisconsin. And these soybeans come from Will County, Illinois. This is grown in America, and we're reconnecting America's farmers with their customers overseas. I've called for a national export program, one that encourages getting some of the 9 million Americans still out of work back on the job and reconnecting with those trade lanes that are so important to us. We here at the Port of Los Angeles are a jobs multiplier. Everything we do has connections throughout this country and right back home here to San Pedro, California. And through our work in the areas of digitization, world-class infrastructure with this engineering marvel that you see before you, and our quest to zero emissions is all focused on jobs and jobs creation, economic development, and to make a more beautiful and cleaner Los Angeles that all Angelinos can benefit from in the future. And on behalf of the 922 Port of Los Angeles employees, I thank you very much for making today possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gene. Um, I also want to give a shout out to John Fago as well, our office clerical unit president as well. Um, so we've done the. Are we doing the certs? We already. Or those are pictures. We're gonna. We're ready to do them. So we're gonna watch this TEU actually go up. I was trying to figure out the name of who's in the crane. Did we find out yet, Ramon? We'll give him a shout out. There is a human being who's moving this right now and I want to give him or her credit. But to paraphrase the graduate, there's a, a future in soybeans. So we are going to see these soybeans nourish somebody in Asia as they sit down for a meal. This is going to be a difference maker and congratulations to everybody making this day possible. Tommy Aceta. Tommy it's Tommy Aceta who's moving this right now up there. Thank you, Tommy. I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk to him while he's doing this.